Hey guys, today we're going to go through a GAMSAT section 3 question that looks like we'll need to know a whole bunch of organic chemistry for, but instead we're going to use pattern recognition. Now before we jump into it, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe, that way more people will be able to benefit from these kind of videos. So let's jump straight into it. Which of the following is the correct systemic name of this bridged ring alkane? And I can see that there is a visual representation, a drawing of a molecule. And in the answer options, we have some names that might look quite intimidating, in fact. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is that we are essentially going to match this picture to a particular name. So there will be features in this picture which I'll need to pick out and will help me to figure out how to name these molecules. Now, one way that someone might go about this is to go to the stimulus, read the text and find out exactly how you would name it. You, you could assume that the rules are probably laid out there for you. But a quicker way might be to recognize the fact that some examples have already been provided. You know, I see there are other uh, visual depictions of molecules that are already named and perhaps what I can do is work backwards and figure out how to match up my picture to one of the answer options. I'm going to use the answer options to guide me. It looks like it's directing me towards the first molecule here, which is called spiro, and in the brackets, 3,3-heptane. And I can tell just by looking at our molecule that there are some similarities. There are two ring structures which are connected by, it looks like, one point. Okay. Now, the fact that all of the options start off with spiro means that we don't need to prove that the molecule that we have is indeed named spiro. We can actually ignore that. Okay. So the, the fact that we know that the spiro probably is referring to the fact that it's a two ring structure connected at one point, um, that's enough for, for us to move on and see what else we can have a look at. Now, another thing that we could look at as well um, is the end of the name, which is, and I can see that there are two options. There's undecane and there's decane. And perhaps we can figure out what would be the difference between the two. Now, if you already have some familiarity with IUPAC naming, even very, very basic, you'll probably recognize decane. Okay. And even if you didn't, we can see that there's an example provided. And the prefixes of dec and also undec are referring to the number of carbons. And we can kind of check this. In fact, you can see why they've given us this example, because if we looked at the last molecule that's provided in the example, which is called bicyclo 440 decane, if we check the number of carbons in this molecule, it is 10. And if we check our molecule and count it, it is also 10. So what this tells us is it's highly likely that our molecule is also a decane. This means that we can already eliminate half of the options. The only real difference between the remaining two options now is whether or not it's 4, 5, or 5, 4, which is the order of the numbers in the brackets. So if we make that our goal, like to figure out, well, which order should it be, and we have a look at the text, we can see, and I'm skimming the text now, so, I can see that there's references to numbering in the third paragraph. So here, let's have a read. The number of carbon atoms in each of the bridges connected to the bridge heads is indicated in the name by being placed in the square brackets. There, there we go. So that's referencing to the, the numbering system in the square brackets. And if we keep on going in descending order, okay, which means that we have to place the numbers from largest to uh, smallest. And we can see from the examples that indeed that's what happens. Uh, when we look at, for example, bicyclo 331 non n and bicyclo 440, we start off with the larger numbers first and we end up with the smaller numbers. So that means the answer should be spiro 54 decane because it's in descending, the numbers are in descending order. So I hope you can see that we didn't need to use a lot of assumed knowledge to be able to solve a problem like this. We just had to break up the question into its parts and look for similarities and look for differences. Towards the end, we also needed to look up a bit of logic or rules to kind of figure out order of the numbers. But 
a lot of it was really just looking at the examples themselves and counting carbons and, and that sort of thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found any of this insightful, please click the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.